So the goal of our meditation practice in the context of the mind illuminated are twofold. At one level, we are trying to cultivate our stable attention. And on the other side, we are trying to cultivate a powerful mindfulness. And to understand our goals more clearly, let's first start with the consciousness. So in terms of consciousness, the way we are experiencing things are twofold. One part of consciousness or one aspect of the consciousness is our awareness, right? And the awareness is also referred here as a peripheral awareness, is a general way of knowing things. So basically we are comprehending different objects that are coming within the field of awareness, right? And the second aspect of the consciousness is our attention. So attention is more focused, right? So awareness just generally aware about these things and attention picks up one of the object from awareness and scrutinize it, right? And look at more closely, analyze it, understand it and kind of scrutinize the particular object. Very similar to the way we see things, right? Very similar to our field of vision. We can just relax and sit back and comprehend a lot of input inside our field of vision or we can focus on a particular object and look at more carefully and see, see it in more details, right? The same way the consciousness has these two properties, right? Either attention or generally aware about things, yeah? And through meditation, we are trying to train these two faculties, basically, yeah? So the first goal of the meditation practice is to cultivate a stable attention. And by the stable attention, what me, what it means here, is we should be able to intentionally direct our attention and sustain our attention on a particular object for as long as we want, right? And then also be able to control the scope of that attention, right? So for example, if the object of attention is breath, so we should be able to stay focused on breath for as long as we want and also control the scope in terms of how narrow or wide we would like to stay focused on the breath. Yeah, so that's the end goal of the stable attention, cultivating stable attention. On the other hand, our current state of this attention is such that what is our current default state of attention is basically our attention is very scattered. And fundamentally what it is doing internally it is constantly scanning our awareness for different objects and eventually it gets captured by one of those objects and then we kind of lose a sense of mindfulness or anything and then at some point we start remembering okay I'm coming back to my breath but that's how things are going on inside ourselves currently right attention is constantly scanning for different objects eventually getting captured by one of those objects we lose the sense of you know, what is going on and then it comes back to the, we then again become aware and then the whole process happens again and again and again. Beside this scanning and getting captured, there's another kind of distraction that goes on, which is alternating attention, right? So the alternating attention is more like when we have this sense of multitasking, right? You may be looking at this video, but you can also kind of have another thing going on, right? Hearing to somebody else it looks like that we can focus on two things at a time, but actually what happens is attention internally very rapidly alternating between these two objects and give the sense that you're multitasking, right? So the default state of attention is, attention is scattered. By scattered, it means it's like constantly scanning for different objects, getting captured, alternating, right? And with the meditation practice, what we, want to reach, the point we want to reach, the goal of the meditation practice is ultimately replacing these three activities of attention by singular exclusive focus on a particular object. Yeah. And the way we train for stable attention is basically we have this control over directing our attention, right? So 
it is possible for me to direct my attention on the breath. But how long I can sustain that attention is not in our direct control, right? Similar to our heartbeat. Our heartbeat is not in our direct control. We can influence it, but we cannot directly control, right? The same way the faculty of attention which decides how long this attention would stay on a particular object is not under our direct control. But we do have an influence and we can influence that process by consciously holding an intention, right? So if we hold an intention, that intention becomes one variable in the process somewhat unconscious for us that decides like how long this attention will stay on this particular object before it gets captured by another object, right? So basically what we are trying to do in the meditation practice as we see in the upcoming stages in terms of stable attention, we are trying to hold different intentions, right? And that's why also it's really important that when we practice, we practice diligently. We actually do the practice. We actually hold an intention. Otherwise, stable attention would not be cultivated, right? We can still cultivate a lot of mindfulness, but in order for us to cultivate a stable attention, it's really important that we practice, but we also practice diligently, right? So that's like a first goal of meditation, cultivating a stable attention and replacing this scanning, getting captured, alternating these states of attention to exclusive attention on a particular object, right? And we train this using conscious intention and that way we sort of train our subconscious mind to stay focused on a particular object for a prolonged period of time, yeah? So that's the first goal of meditation practice. The second goal of the meditation practice is to cultivate a powerful mindfulness, yeah? So again, the way the awareness attention works, we'll see a definition of mindfulness in a moment. So the way the attention and awareness works is that awareness provides a context, right? Awareness provides all the different objects, understanding of the relationship between these objects, like an overall holistic objective context, right? What attention does is basically attention picks up a particular object out of that consciousness, that awareness and focus on it and try to scrutinize it or try to understand it, analyze it and look at it in more detail, right? And in a way solve it, right? So the mindfulness here in the context of the mind, the mind illuminated, the definition of the mindfulness here is the optimal interaction between attention and awareness, right? And the optimal interaction between attention and awareness is awareness should provide the context and the attention should pick up the most important object out of that context and focus on it, right? That's like an optimal interaction between these two. Suboptimal or like not optimal <laughs> or opposite of optimal interaction is that attention is focusing on things which are not important, right? And it's basically reacting. And that's our natural state at the moment, right? What happens is we use attention so much that generally we lost the sense of context, like we lost the big picture. And we are so much, putting so much effort using our attention into the things which are not important, right? Or we are just reacting all the time, right? So our current state is more or less that we don't have a strong awareness, right? And we, our attention is not focusing on the important things and it's just reacting to things, yeah? So with the practice in the mind illuminated is what we are trying to do is we are trying to cultivate our awareness, right? We are trying to cultivate our awareness so that we are holistically aware about bigger picture, externally as well as internally. Generally, we just don't have so much awareness of what is going on inside ourselves, right? Because we never cultivated this kind of introspective awareness. And with the practice, that is what we are trying to do, right? We are trying to 
cultivate this faculty of awareness so that we have like a bigger picture of the context properly right so that attention picks up the right object instead of just reacting that's the one part of cultivating strong mindfulness right cultivating awareness especially introspective awareness right and as it becomes more and more strong that introspective awareness becomes more like a metacognitive awareness where it is more becoming more and more aware about how internal faculties inside our awareness how the mind works basically right so that's the one part of cultivating strong mindfulness another part is that attention and awareness are two aspect of consciousness right almost like a vision right we can either focus or we can stay diffused another part of the practice in cultivating strong mindfulness is cultivating increasing the power of consciousness so if we have more power in terms of consciousness right then it is possible for us to stay focused at something and looking at more deeply at the same time being aware about it right generally what happens is if i'm focused on something i lose the sense of context i lose the sense of awareness right i'm just so tunnel focused on something but if we have like more conscious power it is possible for us to stay relaxed and stay aware about things at the same time very sharply focused on something else yeah so that's the second part of cultivating strong mindfulness just increasing the raw power of consciousness that we just have more consciousness so that we can have like a optimal interaction between our awareness and attention right we are focused on something but we are also having awareness or the context of that thing that's the second goal of the mindfulness that's the second goal of the meditation practice one we are trying to cultivate a stable attention second we are trying to cultivate the strong mindfulness yeah and in the upcoming videos we will start looking at the first stage that focuses on like this process of cultivating stable attention and strong mindfulness <laughs>